Yay, Disco Elysium. So, um, okay, sorry to take us down a weird rabbit hole. Oh, got up here. Rabbit hole. Oh, yeah, because raw plaster is... Uh, it's, it's hefty. Yeah. Um, I would, I would imagine this, because I'm like, well, like, an arm or a hand, but like, I suppose like for a leg or a thigh, yeah, like raw plaster, that, that would be unwieldy, wouldn't it? Okay. Well, cool. Thank you for, uh, indulging my curiosity there. Um, for those of you that aren't aware... Yeah, yeah. I know you guys come here for the rabbit hole more than for the rabbit itself. Um. Um. Now, uh, we've been playing Disco Elysium for, you know, off and on, for more than a month. And by more than a month, I mean several months. At least two months, maybe three months. Um, I will also say, um, uh, a rabbit of Kair Banog, Marauder. I, I appreciate your reference. Um. What is my state in the game? This is still the first day of the game. I managed to make it through the entire first day. Here's my character. Here's my my tragic, horrifying train wreck, train wreck of a private investigator. Let's let's just look right at him there. Clip. I I have been I've been sort of pursuing my standard no pants policy. When, when playing games that allow me to take off my pants. Um, and uh, now I have pants. I actually have two pairs of pants. These are my drug pants. And they're both drug pants. Um, except one is bad for my savoir faire and the other is bad for for my reaction speed. So like, why would I want penalty pants, right? I don't want that. Nobody wants penalty pants. Um, so, uh, you know, I think I'm gonna wear anime gloves and uh, yeah, let's big hero six this. And um, This is my art shirt. I think I could take this shirt off. I don't I don't really need this shirt. And I think I, I could wear this. Yeah, that really fleshes the look out. Um, this, if you have not seen it before, this is a wild, wild game that I despair of being able to describe in, in any sort of in any sort of brief way I mean the the just ride along with us and and see how you feel um, because uh, our partner just went to bed in this game and so now and it's the middle of the night and so I see no reason why. I should not go hog wild on this town. One hippopotami. Is 
See, this guy has been asleep. The worker is in a deep slumber. See, I've tried to wake this guy up previously. I could not. I think I've done everything I can do here. Um, so what I think I'm going to do um, there is I, I've played part of this game before when it initially came out. I can't recommend it highly enough. It's really a beautiful work of breathtaking madness. Um, amazingly well designed. I've never played anything like it. And, but I do remember a few pieces. I never finished it before because I played it mostly during the end of year fundraiser and then I absolutely crashed and burned after the fundraiser uh, um, initially transforming into a being of pure light and energy and then becoming a shattered cinder of a human being that couldn't function. And so I had, there was nothing left to play this game. But what I do remember is like a single plume of smoke over there going through a window. Um, in the back, in a nutshell here, I am a horrible train wreck of a human being in this game uh, also in the regular human world but in this game whoop hold on hold on uh, and I'm supposed to be investigating a murder but I'm not or I didn't rather I have been here in this setting for several days drinking and doing drugs to such an extent that I do not remember anything that's happened and I woke up this morning but I spent all of this day, like, going to bookstores and realizing that I pawned my gun. And I have not gone into the backyard to investigate the body, which is still strung up from a tree. Um, um, oh, well, thank you so much, Nagi Hyde. I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, I haven't gone back there because there's this little kid who is a horror of an NPC and the game is all voice acted now. So like it did not seem okay to just decide to like have, and this, I cuss a lot on this stream. So I know you guys are used to it, but this little son of a bitch is going to run his mouth like nobody's business. Um, so, uh, apparently here I'm having, having a thought. All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters, washing the filth away. Okay, this is wild. I haven't seen this before. Um, I'm really trying to buy my shivers up because this is the game that sort of like puts you in touch with like almost like the supernatural of the world. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. Looking up at the sky, cold water dripping from your hat. Grey sky like great battleships, clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. Your shirt sticks to your chest. The shoulders of your disco blazer grow heavy. The cold finds its way in under your skin. You shiver, and the city shivers with you. See, I never ever got to see these parts of the game before because I built my character a different way. You're not dressed for this weather. You should get an overcoat or a patrol cloak. <laughs> well, look at this. This is the end of my thought. <laughs> Um, 
This is also interesting. This is like it, the the game is pulled back, and it's it's giving me a chance to like learn about the city, even though I've I've been playing this game for hours. What's in the west? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez, with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet beyond the Bay of Revachol. Ghosts rise into the sky. Hey, ghosts! The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. Will you ever go there? Yeah, my inland empire, which is like my ability to believe in the secret inner lives of inanimate objects and stuff. Man, again, I love this game. Uh, will you ever go there? Will I? No, you are just one of the hundreds of thousands who watch them rise across the bay from Martinez every day. Urban coastline, rain dripping off etonite covered roofs, cinder blocks left over from half-finished construction, a defunct research and development building, once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. And beyond that? Coal City, end of all lines. And I love how it gives me this to move on. Where this is a very noir feel. Oh, interesting. Uh, it didn't voice act that. Um, in the east? There's a fleet on the corner. A plastic coat is folded into a small triangle under the counter by the window. Beyond that, the strike breakers have gathered. Oh, this is interesting. Um, that description of Freet under the counter by the window. The great gates of the industrial harbor are locked. A chill runs down your back. You shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide. Behind the gates, heaps of supply crates Red and blue metal shipping containers, slick with rain. The Greater Revachol Industrial Harbor is an artificial mountain range. Immense wealth resides within, and immeasurable poverty in its shadow. La Dussienne, King Dries Passenger Harbor. Cruise ships flanked by dock arms, cranes watching over the mouth of the river distributary. Kuron. The lower middle class, distributary after distributary cuts the city blocks in half. Seven-story buildings trail off into the rain. A silvery curtain of rain over the houses, the class divide. Tower blocks crowd one another, 4.46 millimeter bullets still lodged in their war-torn stone walls. Hi, Aaron. Hallways collapse from the mortar hits of a war that was lost long ago. Clotheslines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. A yard. Rain falls onto the roof of a woodshed. Coal leaks into a puddle beneath a dead man's feet. He swings from a tree, bloated. Droplets of rain slip from his cold cheeks. I guess I'll ride this out. Although, honestly, that's a good place. That would be a great place for us to end and then go up and investigate the body like I'm meaning to. A traffic jam. Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside, drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. The statue of a king shudders. He, too, is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork, and tar stretches northward, 
four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snows melt in Jamrock. Revachol is the capital of the world. Jamrock is the capital of Revachol. Droplets form on your eyelashes. It's home. <laughs> Where the hood? Where the hood? Where the hood at? I have a brother in the cut. Where the hood at? See, I think, is this a song? To be in Martinez, where no one goes, at the runoff point of a long forgotten canal, in the whitest part of town, in the shadow of the day the revolution fell. Standing in the rain, looking north, where Jamrock Rock City stretches inland. In the rain-swept distance, above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 hunches in the rain. Your vision blurs. You wipe your face with your hand. The rain stings your eyes making you look up and blink. So, I'd like to point out a very tiny, but very good piece of game design. Somebody here said, uh, is this uh, fellow? said, it's a great game, but you'll have to like all the reading. It's similar to Planescape Torment. Um, or uh, uh, Numenera, the game I was playing. Um, the only downside I found is if you're someone who wants to experience 100% of the game during a playthrough, you've got to be disappointed. And that's true, because who you are and what you do is very unique in every playthrough. Um, but you see here, you're try it's trying to get you to live in this world and understand the setting. Um, and so I kind of wanted to s like hear all of what it had to say. And so I, I did all of it. And then it gave me experience just for clicking through this and reading about the whole world. Now, why is that significant? It's because in a lot of games, like in Diablo, the only way you progress the game is through killing things. And the only rewards you get are experience and money and items. And the only way you get those things is by killing things. And so the whole game is about killing things. So, and if you get to the end, you get to kill a thing, the biggest thing, and then you win. But this game is about story and atmosphere and getting to know the world. And so if you are curious and look around and experience everything, you get experience points, which is the core mechanisms of the game rewarding you for playing the game effectively because engaging in the world that's presented here is is really what the game is. Um, Coalition era statics hang like apparitions under the cloud cover. Way up there, where rain forms, rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. These spring thaw will not last. The winter will return to Revachol. Hmm. See, again, that is just a cool little experience, and I got some, uh, I got some experience as well. And I tell you, I want this experience. I desperately feel like I need to level up some of my stats. Because so far, I have put most of my experience into, like, my my thought palace. Um,
Okay, so let's go deal with Kuno. What is this, though? Ah, street sign. This little son of a bitch. I've avoided him twice just to root around in this dumpster. The trash container stands in the sp The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. You see milk. A box falls into... Not much to see here. There's nothing more of interest. The container sounds a muffled gong. This is also a great way to make me aware. Like, sometimes I think something and I get one of these. Sometimes I perceive something. This is effectively me making a passive check of some sort where I've... You know, which allows me to interact with the world. Okay, so here's this poor son of a bitch. Spoiled meat and curdled dairy. Conspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. Huh. Okay, here's one of the reasons, one of the things that I do dislike about this game is I'm like, oop, I'm about to make a perception roll. Do I have anything that influences perception? Conspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. It's not really inconspicuous. It looks like it's a boarded up door to me. Because there's <laughs> a secret door hidden behind the panels of eat tonight. That's why they're too orderly. Ha! <laughs> I think it's funny. I actually made a really, really lucky roll there. There it is. You see a shabby little door. <laughs> I achieved that through the power of not wearing pants. Silver plate with traces of bone yellow powder. Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. <laughs> so, again, my kind of, my loving but straight-laced uh, partner has been with me all day. He just went to bed. And I'm like, and so I'm like, I guess I'll go exploring. Secret drawer. Hmm. Plate full of drugs. <laughs> So, uh, let's <laughs> lick it. You run your tongue across the plate four or five times. 
like a dog. <laughs> Still, just a very faint, bitter taste. This isn't enough to get a big man anywhere. Oh, how dis how dissatisfying. Uh poster says, get out of the way or get fucked up. What is this? Oh, looks like a secret cache. Oh, money. Get that. You can get that that tall them tall dollars. An empty tube of magnesium supplement. Cured pig head. And you can go. This gets me up onto the roof. Oh, bye, Becca. Thanks for swinging by. Oh, wow. Uh, Elysium was banned in Australia? Oh, my coat. My coat. Oh, hold on. Wait. There's a lot. There's a lot going on here. Looks like there's a... This is actually kind of hard to see, but it is also... Oh, wait, wait. Wait. Everybody, wait. Hold on. We can use equipment for the things that it's meant for in this game. I have tools... And in addition to a clipboard and a bottle of beer, I suppose I could trade in the bottle of beer for a flashlight. Because it is in the middle of the actual, literal night. There we go. Look at this. Look at me. I'm doing it. Also, now I want to go look in that room with the flashlight. Okay, there. What kind of lunatic keeps a pig head in their shack? The sort of lunatic we're about to talk to in a little bit. What's this? Oh, a postcard. Ooh, just money laying on the roof, because of course. Items, postcard. need that healing item given that I only have two two points of health. I effectively have two hit points and I've lost one. Now, this I don't like. Here's this horrible world and everyone's poor and everything. And there's just money laying on this roof. That's right, I can't reach that. Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. Oh boy. That's my coat. Man down. A trooper has been left behind the enemy lines. Oh wait. This is a challenging passive check I just made. This didn't happen last time. You could swear it's more of an instinct than an actual sight. But you know there's the RCM signature rectangle on the cloak. It's a cop's cloak. 
It's my cloak. Unaware of your existence, the cloak continues its helpless flapping. The white rectangle, now clearly visible in the wind, seems to confirm your hypothesis. But who's the cop? You are the cop. It's your cloak. Don't make things complicated. Oh boy. My sav warfare is not good. Hold on. I what can I do to raise to raise my because what have I got here? Uh you'll see Savoir Fair is um n like physique and motorics are my two worst stats, and you'll see of everything here, my absolute worst stat is Savoir Faire. <sighs> I, I am not full of panache. Now, I do know what I can do, though, to improve th my chances ever so slightly, is I can, like, take off my tie? Sorry, we've seen some good times together, Ty, but... Sometimes you just gotta... Sometimes you just gotta... Take off your tie and try to... The appalling cloak with possible RCM markings oh, is boy. still caught on the railing. That didn't help at all. <laughs> How the hell? Okay, do it. Just... Oh, no. My, my own lack of cool has damaged my morale. You could have done that. You don't have to jump. Nope. No. That's still too high. What were you thinking? You're not a gymnast. You're a boxer. And you've <laughs> climbed way too high up here. You could have died there. Shit, 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 shit. <laughs> I'm failing you. This wasn't part of our deal. Well, look at this. I failed Savoir Faire. And then I also made a passive failure of my my willpower. The tears just come from nowhere, like a sudden guerrilla attack from the bushes. They overwhelm you. I made a really bad passive volition roll there. After a while, your sobbing stops. Up here, no one saw the little meltdown you just had. And your heart actually feels lighter now. Time to proceed. <laughs> Come on! Uh, my coat! God damn it. <sighs> you know what? I can't believe I even bothered taking off my fancy... See? I, I, I bet none of that would have happened if I would have left my tie on. Can you jump? You know, what I hate is that this is a problem that any human being could solve by getting a long stick. You just look, there's a long stick. You just poke your coat and it'll fall down. What's happening in my thought palace here? Oh boy. My... <laughs> this thought process I have is really, 
really ruining me. It's ruining my visual calculus and my authority. Fine. But here is some tracks and There are stuff. several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve peers have walked here. Sitting at a desk, Lieutenant Kitsuragi fiddles with a pen, then writes something on the paper in front of him. He shouldn't be doing that. He should be here discussing the footprints. <laughs> so I wonder if I get to... There are several footprints. Sitting at a desk. Oh, I can't... I can't do that without Kim. That's interesting. Rickety but climbable ladder. Oh boy. Okay, everyone, here it comes. Time to talk with Kuno. Hey, little kid. I noticed that you're throwing rocks at this corpse. Could you maybe... Could you stop just a little? Could you just a little bit not? I... Okay, here's the thing. I think I've got to... Uh, I've got to dress for success here. Is Kuno the sort of person who's going to respect um, the bum hat? Um, I think I've got to... I think i got to take off my glasses. Um, and I think i got to... I gotta put on my fancy coat. Yeah, there we go. Now we're anime. Now, do I put on my either of my pairs of drug pants? No. Do I put on my my bum hat? No, I think this is this is as fancy as I can get. Now my tools. I think for hanging out with a cool kid like Kuno requires um, I should approach him while holding a pair of smokes uh, a pack of smokes and a garbage bag that I use for picking up bottles now here's the thing somebody said please wear pants when talking to children uh, hold on, wait. Uh, now I have a thought. There it is. A brave little army in your pocket. <laughs> the first smokes platoon. Twenty brave souls standing in salute. Ready to step into fire for you, sir. Oh, see, you know... You know, Kim isn't here. So, I think... Maybe I'm gonna smoke a cigarette... And that will make me seem cooler to Kuno. I'm really scared of this interaction, everyone. You picked the best one. This soldier is fat and succulent. What are you waiting for? Light up. Re-become yourself. I'm going to laugh if I realize I don't have a lighter and I try to bum a, bum a light off Kuno. Oh, uh, sorry, roundish bag. If it helps, you're going to... You're going to watch this guy probably almost die because he smokes a cigarette. Oh, yes, Bratan. Please light up. You need a trooper between your <laughs> lips right now. Calm your shit down. Become a genius. <laughs> I don't want to light it right now. People are watching. Yeah, I do. Let's try to... Uh, uh, empath I want to... S let the kids see that I'm I'm cool. Get a load of this rock and roll cop. Yeah, that's right, people. rock and roll cop. Johnny Thundercop fishes <laughs> a cheap lighter out of his pants. With a flick of the thumb, there's fire. A primal satisfaction. Here we go. What are the repercussions if I do this? I mean, I, I do like the thought that he has a moment, a moment of clarity repercussions 
there's a high risk of glory with a mild chance cool genius smoking makes you into an intellectual everybody knows that oh well in that case it will help you concentrate a bit that much is true let's do it Whoa, no, it hurt my health. Thick, warm smoke <laughs> gets sucked down. Oh, into oh your lungs. no. Immediately, you feel a warm nostalgia fill your head, body, and soul. A nostalgia for yourself. <laughs> the man you were in your youth. Johnny Thundercop is back, and he's chill as balls. <laughs> Johnny Thundercop. Cop is back, and he's chill as balls, folks. That's right. That's right. You know what? You know what, though? What's better than having a smoke before you talk to a kid? You know what's better than that? And we want smokes in one hand and some party drugs in the other. That's right. That's right, we do. <laughs> so this is the most accurate smoking simulation I've ever seen. Just wait, it gets better. Uh. Whoa. In your hand. Parolidol. <laughs> the double rainbow of synthetic hallucinogens. Rare and gritty. A product of the age of atomic power. This is what Johnny Thundercop would do, and this is why we let Kim go to bed. Look at the little puck of liquid. This isn't meth. Uh, this is some high-grade hallucinogen. What a funny little cat. Don't let the scary medical warnings throw you off. It's an inadequate antidote to radiation poisoning, but a potent antidote to... Boredom. Radiation poisoning sounds scary. It's not gonna give you radiation poisoning, stupid. Parolidon is a perfect match for a badass junkie cop who's looking for a little heat. Hmm, tell me more. The container is warm to the touch. Or is that just the anticipation? You screw the lid open and look. A little slit on the side lets you just... Slurp it up like an oyster. Come on, slurp it. <laughs> I don't want to slurp it, but only a little. Nah, slurp it aggressively. Yeah. Also, I'm <sighs> dying again. You suck a manly dose of the extremely chemical smelling liquid into your mouth. There, it seeps into your tongue. When you swallow, it's already almost all gone. Tastes like fire. That's what Johnny Thundercop thinks. It tastes like many things, all melting into one conflagration in the back of your throat. As you look around, the world slowly exists as it did before. Only now, gentle flames lick at its edges as though it were a photo burning. Oh, God. Is everything fire? Not really. It's just a metaphor. The effect of that otherworldly drop of liquid is slower, more subtle than that of real flames, yet just as warm. <laughs> this is going to be so useful as a private investigator. Will I be able to stand straight and walk? Hell yeah! I'm Johnny Thundercup. I'm David Bowie with, a, with mutton chops. Why not? This government-developed substance seems very non-intrusive. You could even operate heavy machinery. Not Fire machinery. Fire machinery. This is going to be so useful. Already you can tell you're going to be slurping a lot more Parolidon. This stuff is going to give you insight into that little flickering light hidden in all human beings. That's right. And I, I completed a secret quest. And so now my intellect is higher. 
and my psyche is higher because I smoked a cigarette and did party drugs before talking to a little boy. Oh, hold on. So, I effectively did... Physical instrument. Sorry, I'm just looking at my stats here. I still don't know my own name. Okay. Let's go, everyone. Who's ready? Let's save the game now. I like that I did use up all almost all of my healing just to just to smoke a cigarette and have some party drugs. Kuno's got this. The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. Hey now. I think Kuno is beautiful. Oh yeah, not a comfy Kuno. Hey kid, a word. Police business. Uh a moment of your time uh, you know let's do this let's let's go let's try to be formal although <laughs> i like the fact that i got crazy eyes now i just did a bunch of hallucinogens hey a word police business i don't know a moment of your time please seems polite but a kid throwing rocks at a corpse probably isn't going to go for this sort of gentility police business it is The children ignore you. It's loving in the dick. Oh, yeah. I do like that, like, you know, they'll cuss a lot, but they actually uh, static out some hate speech here. The boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. What does that mean? The kid is obviously high. <laughs> Stop getting high at my getting high. I mean, my crime scene. Stop getting high at my crimes. <laughs> Stop using slurs at my crime scene. I mean, one of these is very funny. And the other is like, you know, I think we're going to do this. Can't talk, pig. Shit's coming up strong, throwing rocks. <laughs> He's can't can't talk. I'm I'm peeking. I'm peeking. Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. Yeah, Kuno, ride the lightning, Kuno. <laughs> Kuno's rides in it, see? He wipes the sweat from his brow and sends another rock climbing. The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener. So hold on. Wait. I, I'm going to take a pause here. It did occur to me. You know, if I'm going to be a policeman here, I think I should. I'm going to put on... What is this? I think I want to put on some some cool blue jeans so I can empathize with this teen. 
as well as uh, my drug gloves. There we go. So yeah, now I'm ready to talk to Kuno with my drug gloves on. Whoa, hold on. The pockets of these new jeans are perfect for sticking your hand into. Makes you look cool, calm, and collected. Oh. As your hand enters the pocket, your fingers brush against something. Soft, yet crinkly. I just, I found a hundred dollars. Hey, it's a chewing gum wrapper. It reminds you of the fruity juice of apricots. You should inspect it closer if you have time. Something about the wrapper's texture is familiar. <laughs> No, this is great. This is going to be great because... By the way, the raw materials were most likely exported from Seagai, the apricot suzerainty, and processed in Sir Le Clay into the apricot-flavored chewing gum loved by kids of today and yesterday. Mm, something about it is familiar, and not only to your fingers. So I found in my pocket a piece of chewing gum that which I can interact with. And so I love the thought that I have walked up to this child. I'm like, hey, police business. Hey, don't use a slur. And then I, I, I put on a pair of pants. I put on a pair of pants and some fingerless gloves and then I'm like and also like then my drugs kick in and I'm like oh this chewing gum wrapper though it speaks to me uh <laughs> oh man uh so anyway uh just revel in uh this man's beautiful whole everything uh well i quick go grab a bottle of water uh because i'll be right back i gotta i mean this this shit's coming up fast and i gotta keep, keep my head right Hey Tristan, yeah, this is a weird. This is this is a weird, uh, weird place to come in in this game. Uh, but it's a. I don't know if there's ever not a weird uh, place to come in in this game. I do like how before he went to talk, he's sort of been circling this kid all day like, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. And then he goes, he changes all of his clothes, puts on this Civil War jacket, smokes cigarette drug, does some drugs, and then gets distracted by a cigarette there wrapper. There it is again. The scent of apricots with a touch of cinnamon. Smells like the end of some distant summer. The surface of another planet. Or some ancient temple. Yes, from the height of antiquity. A long, long time ago. Millennia ago. On an island of time you can never return to. <laughs> I'm glad Charlotte's the only one who's allowed to listen. 
The end of summer. The sun sets into the sea, but the water does not boil. Instead, it turns to liquid gold. For a moment, the world's store of precious metals seems to increase dramatically, and you are rich. There is a movement next to you, the shuffle of a small coat, warm like the evening. But when you turn toward it, there's nothing there. Uh, where did it go? Why are you talking to a gum wrapper? <laughs> Take a deep breath. Smell the gum wrapper. Bitter, citrus, sweet. It seems to grow stronger, like a glow, with every breath you take. Whatever petrochemical byproducts they used to create this artificial flavor have bonded tightly to the wrapper, or is that just your memory filling the gaps? Until a blossom of skin and flower petals erupts behind your closed eyes, made of toffee, cream, and distance. You just had to take a dive. Wow, okay. It feels so, so familiar. Thought gained. Apricot chewing gum scented one. Okay. So I... This is one of the cooler parts of the game where... You have the chance to like gain, th like think of things, and it takes up a space in your brain. But and so this is called apricot chewing gum scented one. You found a trace of. of an entity who has been stalking you across the plains, the gloom stalker, the conglomeration, the shadowy organization behind your downfall. It is impossible to determine its true identity, but you can remember where you first smelled its treachery. Yes, use the Tutti Frutti gum wrapper. Reconstruct the day you first breathed in her untrustworthy atoms. Whew, yeah, not, not carrying around anything there, are you? Uh, hoof. I should really get another point of endurance. I'm just always so close to dying. Okay, now I'm ready. I'm ready to talk to this kid. Can't you see I'm throwing rocks? I can. Uh, hey, hey, you want to hang out? Fuck no, Kuno doesn't buy that shit. <laughs> Fucking entrapment shit. Hey, I've got some questions. All right, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? <laughs> Show me what you got. Hey, Kuno, I found your shack. Actually, I'm going to work my way up to that. That's going to be my big reveal. So what do you know about the body? Shitload pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. Uh, Pig's choking. He's totally choking. I don't have questions. Fucking idiot, Mulkapa. Doesn't know any questions. <laughs> The lieutenant is sitting on the edge of his bed, 20 kilometers from here, and cleaning his boots. An archetypal policeman like him would definitely come up with some questions to ask right now. Unlike you, standing here alone, unable to gather your thoughts. Okay. Kuno doesn't fucking care. <laughs> I like how he keeps walking up. To Kuno and he's like, maybe I can talk to him about this. Maybe I can talk to him about that. And he's like, but he asks like one question, fails, 
and then decides to go away again. I guess I'll go look at the body myself. Fine, Kuno. You suck. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. Ugh. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. I wonder if I wonder if it's going to improve my reputation with Kuno with Kuno if I just puke right here. This legendary check is a 14. Uh Fine. I'm going to try it. I might get lucky. I'd have to roll double sixes. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a spell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Even a blind pig finds an acorn every once in a while, everybody. <laughs> Quick, go buy a lottery ticket. Uh, I like to, I mean, <laughs> I mean, my only regret is that Aaron, uh, uh, is that Aaron wasn't here to see that. Um, because he would have been so pissed because he's a big beefy boy of a character and probably succeeded because of that, whereas I had literally one point in, in endurance. Uh, the man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enameled boots. His skin is greenish marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. You know, I wonder if... Okay, so here, let's do this right. I'm gonna put the... I've already taken these drugs. So now it's time to get my clipboard out and be a cop with with my flashlight and I'm also going to wear I'm going to wear my glasses if I'm going to inspect this body. Okay. The man before you is naked but for a pair of underpants. Okay, let's and check the boots. boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you, out of place somehow. These are like some awesome cyber boots. These are clearly not boots. They're oh. armor, possibly part of a larger set. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Inspect the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow. Hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. This is a steel-reinforced cargo lashing belt, big brother of the regular cargo belt. It's used for tying cargo under six-rotor airships. 
The man before you is naked, but an intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. Alcohol and heartbreak. <laughs> His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Underneath the curdled meat, there is an expression, not carried on his features, but below, inside, an expression of pleasure. This man was experiencing joy at the moment of his death. Wow, hold on. That's a lot from empathy. Inland Empire. Yeah, my best stat. That's oh, now watch me miss this one, right? I'm gone. That would have only been fair. Into the wow pile yonder. Uh, this is sort of uh, Disco David Bowie. In the past, way out west. And I love how, like, this is all just happening in my head. Who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. There's nothing funny about There is you. nothing funny about jokes either. Who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. Wow. Go ahead, Kobo. <laughs> I hate you. You stink and you're boring. What's happening? What do you mean? I am kind of talking to you in my head like you're the worst imaginary friend ever. It's the power of your... Yeah. Imagination. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, man! Don't be crazy! Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you. Your wild imagination is doing this. Ask some more of those questions you love so much. He loves those. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copperoonie. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Yeah, give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, copperoonie rooney. This is getting upbeat now. <laughs> My name is Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. That's right. My name is Raphael Ambrosius Custo. Listen to yourself. You're not a Raphael anything. You're probably just a Harry or something. That's right. Harry. 
Nope, it can't be. I refuse. Good for you. <laughs> Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Who killed you? Love did me in, Brother Copo. It was love all along. Hear that, man. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? Looking at my face. Motionless. Looking into my eyes. Standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? Maybe this will lead to something indescribable, unforeseen, and miraculous. Ha! <laughs> the face rotates before you slowly. Something is on its way. Something hidden. It's coming. A miracle from the northwest. And it's almost here. You can feel it in the air, on your hands. The cold spring air smoothing them over. Wow. Why were you feeling pleasure when you died? Maybe I was getting my rocks off. What dialect is that, anyway? It's a mishmash, Copper Bolo. You think I'm Messinian, don't you? For you, this is how people from Messina speak like. Are you? No. My hair is too light a shade of brown. My eyebrows, too. Trust your inner racist. Are, are you a racist dead man? You think I am. You think I was a racist because this lump looks like military and has tattoos. That's called profiling. I mean, that's fair. So, you were feeling sexual arousal when they were hanging you. Little known fact, when you are hung, or hanged, depending, uh, you and you're a dude type with dude parts, then you get a big old boner. Do I look like an erotic auto-asphyxiation type to you? Uh, I mean, given that you had to deal with the asphyxiation thing, man, I hope there was a little auto in there. Uh... Yes? Captain Copo Dromo, I fear we are drifting away, fixating on sexuality again. Let's go oh. with a simpler question. Oh, hey, Larry. Uh, get get some good rest. Sorry you're here for this this weird, horrible stream. He didn't choke himself. You know it. I mean, part of me wants to close this out. I mean, I shouldn't start a fight with a dead man, but... Let's just see where things are going. Do I remind you of someone? A child born with Muller's disease, Harlequinism, grown up miraculously. A deep sea creature. No, not quite. Be fair now. You sure wrinkled out of that one, Coppolini. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams.
this isn't i can come back and talk to the corpse whenever i want wow wow um wow also that dialogue did not match up with this text squint and take a step back as you narrow your eyes the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue his fatted hands thighs and his neck just above the noose the rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air the cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue of course you have questions don't you the power of your imagination <laughs> Is at your service. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible. Ah, uh, see there. Also, it is. see me in your dreams. Hey, Kuno. I'm ready to talk now. Fuck, does Coon okay? Actually, hold Kuno on. Coon doesn't fucking. Uh, I am going to. I gotta go back. Let me see. I'm gonna try to uh, relate to Kuno by holding a beer instead of the clipboard. Okay. Two kids often play in this yard. Actually, I want to ask it about. Well, ask him about the body. Shitload pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. Fucking idiot, milk. The lieutenant is sitting on the edge of his bed, twenty kilometers from here, and cleaning his. Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo choo. What do you want with it? Dead man's clothes were in the trash container. How did they get there? Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. I need to know it could lead. It could be a lead. Somebody may have tampered with the murder scene. Listen, listen. Kuno doesn't care about this small time shit. Just listen. <laughs> Kuno saw what you did there, dumpster diving. Sad shit. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags. Shit like Kuno's wearing. Your size, good price. 500 real. Okay. Now, you realize you're trying to sell pants to the worst possible market ever. But I'll hear... Tell me about these pants. Pig, these are foul modulars. Liquid fit, performance crotch, urban survival shit. Made in me over by scientists. Pants scientists. There's no such thing as pants science, Kuno. Now, performance crotch was my nickname in high school. Believe it, you need this shit. He unzips his jacket to give you a quick peek. At the plastic wrapped pants, they are graphite black and look brand new. These could drastically improve your chances of survival in the urban wilderness. <laughs> Coach Physical Instrument endorses these pants. They are tartan ready. They will also make you into an idiot. <laughs> I might be interested in the pants. All right, Piggo. Shit's rolling. Don't do business with the pig, Kuno. He's going to steal all your money, Kuno. As you can see, Kuno and C don't trust you. Can't do business without trust. The 
bears more to his distrust than being a pig. He feels threatened by something obscure in you. What that is, however, remains a puzzle for now. Hmm. <laughs> I'm showing everyone this broken racist mug I found in the trash. The fuck? A mug in the trash? Is this about the fucking clothes again? Does this racist mug have anything to do with it? Yeah, Kuno sees where this is going. Kuno's got that fast brain. You saying you pigs are after the mug fucker because he's the clothes fucker? There you go, Kuno. Way to put it together. I can't hear you, Kuno. <clears throat> Speak louder, Kuno. That's right, Kuno. Someone's tampered with the crime scene. Shit, that's tense. Someone's going to the beatdown basement, huh? Mug guy gonna get tied to the radiator. Kuno doesn't know who put that shit in there. And if he did, he wouldn't squeal. But if you find out, maybe you can... Tell the Kuno who it was. He's curious. He likes putting two and two together here. Ah, Kuno. Stop turning into a pig, Kuno. They're trying to get you hooked on the snitching. Get away from my Kuno. F oh, this is a little mistake. Uh, this is plural uh, because the game is assuming that Kim is here with me, which he's not. Yeah, get your bacon shit away. Kuno doesn't like to be seen with the popo. Get your shit done and out of Kuno's face. What about what about that ladder over there, Kuno? Look at that fucking shit. You're trying to get Kuno killed. So, would you say that ladder is unclimbable? Fuck, does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat. It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! <laughs> What's in the greenhouse? Don't know. Kip that gardener used to work there. Kipped is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Eri Obergeit descent. It used to be a common first name among the airy upper guides of Ilmara. Not so much anymore. I mean the young woman sitting on the corner. Look, Kuro doesn't explain shit. Kuro just says shit. <laughs> yeah, her. What was she doing in the greenhouse in March anyway? What kind of gardening is done in March? Should ask her about that. Yes, it seems suspicious. You don't like things being like that. Suspicious. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno doesn't fucking care. <laughs> Kuno. Ah, oh, she left. Oh well. I'll talk to her later. Fuck, does Kuno care? Yeah, the kingdom of Kuno. The f yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. So, talk to me about the entire Kuno brand. Kuno's Kuno, pig? <laughs> it's always Kuno, never I. Clearly the kid's using the third person perspective as a shield. <clears throat> Do you refer yourself in the third person to distance yourself from the situation? 
Kuno doesn't do that smart shit. Don't throw that book shit at Kuno. Kuno knows you're lying. Trying to get Kuno hooked on the book. <laughs> hooked on the book. The boy knows he has an addictive personality. Admirable insight for his age. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! The thing behind the fence starts squealing. Shrill and violent like a fire alarm. The sound gets louder as the child shouts. Help! He's got the Kuno! Help! It's just to answer the questions. Help! He's digging his dick out! <laughs> Escalate, Kuno! His dick is out! You're afraid! <laughs> Jesus. Pigs it in, Kuno! Somebody, please! The wind carries the message far and wide across Martinez in the middle of the night. How did we get here? How did this happen? Oh, God. This makes no sense. There may still be a way out. Just appeal to his reason. <laughs> Don't punch him. It's a bad idea. Uh, yeah, like, probably just smacking this kid is not a great idea. Are you high? Help! Misters, help! He prances around, eyes bulging out of their sockets, yelling at windows. He's having the time of his life. Total ecstasy. Fuck the pig. He's flashing Kuno. He's showing his genitals. Jesus. If you don't help Kuno now, it'll be too late. Who put you up to this? No one. Kuno's doing this because he likes it, pig. <laughs> this is where Kuno establishes dominance over you. Ah. Change of plan. You can't let that happen. It will make things harder down the line. You may end up missing crucial information. Someone put you up to this. You did this to yourself when you antagonized the Kuno? Police violence! Rape! No! <laughs> Get off Kuno, wow. you sick fat fuck! The nearly psychopathic way that could slip in and out of the act implies you're not the first victim. That's funny. I don't remember this from the first time I played this game. Fucking logical. <laughs> Help! The logical pig is fiddling Kuno. I mean, I could... No. You know, like, this would give me an extra point to physical instrument, but... No. No. Look. For emphasis, a ghost is saying this. A shit-eating psychopathic ghost with an ace up his sleeve. I know you wanted to hit me. You got that, I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up look. The Kuno's dad gets. The murder look. The rage look. Can you read my mind, Kuno? How do I get back to it? I want to go back to that thought. Can you read my mind? Cause this is great. <laughs> I can. Kuno can smell that violent shit. I know what you were thinking. I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up. I'm gonna shut his shit down. You know what? You should have hit the Kuno, because now... Raises his voice again. You're nothing! You're a joke to Kuno! Kuno laughs at you! King Kuno! Kuno turned you into his prison, bitch! You're gonna be in this shit with Kuno!
What about Kuno Shadow? Peepo is a type of hat, by the way. You don't talk to me about my fucking Peepo. You don't know where I come from. You're just Kuno's bottom bitch. <laughs> okay, Kuno is kind to his bitch. Ask your questions, but remember, this changes shit. <laughs> shit, load pig. Don't tell the pig shit, who fucking idiot. The lieutenant is sitting on the edge of his bed, 20 kilometers from here, and cleaning his boots. An archetypal policeman like him would definitely come up with some questions to ask right now. Unlike you, standing here alone, unable to gather your thoughts. Try to figure out what's going on with Kuno. Okay, let's... You know, nah, you know what? Kuno doesn't fucking care. I need an edge on Kuno. And so I'm gonna... I have no choice but to use my clipboard. Fuck, does Kuno care? Yeah, see, now here, Kuno doesn't respect me as much because I didn't take a swing at him. But, you know, this is an instance, like, hitting a kid who's obviously been abused by his father. I don't care if it's going to, like, give me a plus to a check later on. It's like, I'm not, I'm not, nope, not going to play the game that way. He's on your crime scene, bossing you around. And he's been here for some time, too. This is where he hangs out. You have to get more out of him. He could be useful. So here we go. You must have seen all kinds of things throwing stones here. Want to hear, want to help bust a murderer? No. <laughs> what are you? Fucking mentally handicapped. Kuno, they've almost made you a snitch now. Ease off, see. Kuno always takes the bullet over the hammer. I found your shack. <laughs> you see here, this is why we saved it. I found your shack. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? I phase-shifted, Kuno, because I'm a wizard. Shit. Get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. You can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck at you again. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? Uh, That's my coat up there. <laughs> Just totally. Is it? You got pretty fucked. Kuno's surprised you've still got your head after all that. After all what? Don't sweat it, drunk pig. Kuno will keep your nasty secrets. Kuno's not snitching. He's saying you climbed up there. He probably saw you do it. Okay. Can I get out of the harbor? Of course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys his gimps? Just got a fly pig. 
Tried that. Didn't go so well. Kuno knows. Kuno and C saw you shit yourself. It's okay, pig. Not everyone can face the fear Kuno style. That's all there is to it, then. Don't be a pansy. Just jump. What's with the pig head? Oh, that? Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Like some sort of a musician. We gotta add Kuno to the band. Yeah, Kuno plays on Snuff Radio. Fucks pigs live. Fucks their heads off. Kuno's a cop killer. So, you had a bunch of drugs in there, but it wasn't enough for me to get high, and I'm very disappointed, Kuno. That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam! Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig! Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. It's a vitamin, pig! Don't you know anything? You could use some. Yeah, it's the Mac. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips Mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno. He's gonna use it against you, Kuno. <laughs> You're not getting this pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're going to OD and you're going to fucking die. <laughs> Jesus. Good call, pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. The fuck do you want with it? Is it? You got pretty... Whatever, piggy. Good call, pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Kuno's Kuno. You already know that slow shit. Kuno thinks you have brain damage or some shit. Kuno cares. Kuno, stop being nice to the pig. Step away from Kuno, fat-ass creep. Ease off, see. Don't be telling Kuno what Kuno can do. What else you want, pig man? Yeah? The kingdom of Kuno? The fuck do Yeah, whatever. Kuno shitload, pig. Don't tell the pig, fucking idiot. The lieutenant is sitting on the edge of his... Kuno doesn't fucking... Okay. So, I wonder... Okay, ask the gardener, buy the pants... Put the clothes in the trash. So maybe now that Kuno's told me how it's done... Falling cloak with possible Arsia markings is still caught on the railing. Backed by physical instrument. What does that mean? Okay, let's see here. 
Uh, I can't wear these shoes while I'm doing it. on my, my bum fighting hat and my bum jacket. There we go. This is how we do it. And then I think we also have to have a beer and uh, chain cutters. Pauline cloak with possible RCM markings. Is still <laughs> oh, there's caught Kuno on the watching. Way. Okay, here we go. I can do it. Huh. God damn it. Ah. Nope. No. That's still too high. What were you thinking? You're not a gymnast. <laughs> You're a boxer, and you've climbed way too high up here. Oh, man. Will you? Because it feels like you've strained a muscle there, or two. Damn. Uh. So humiliated. I'm so so like I gotta go down there and Kuna's gonna make fun of me again. Hey, dead guy, you were a lot nicer to me than Kuno was. Can we talk? The man before you is naked, but for a pair of... Of course. You have questions, don't you? The power of your imagination is a... Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my... As you narrow your eyes, only the lower extremities, the cadaver slowly twists on the cargo... man before you is n as you narrow your eye only the lower extremities the cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt you know the pig's getting pretty close to me
me. Come to snuff my shit out, I think. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pigs come to take me in. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? <laughs> you there, behind the fence. You don't want to fuck with me. I got my hands bloody. I'm not here, pig. You're not seeing this. You can still see the top of her hat from behind the fence. I'll die before I squeal, pig. Child, converse with me. I come from the woods, Kutavitu. You don't want to go there with me. You don't want to see what I... Don't be traumatizing here. Get the fuck out of here. I'll die before I squeal, pig. What's this kid shit? Fucking mind games. I'd want... Get the fuck out of here, face. I'll die before I squeal. Murder was the case. Was the case they gave me. Huh. Yeah, nothing to be gained there. Fuck, does Kuno care? Oh, interesting. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Uh, talking to Kuno S. Um. It gave me a little bit of an insight into Kuno. So now I have a chance to retry Kuno this. It's not Kuno. It's Kuno S. Interesting. How? Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence. Afraid for her life, like she's done something, something very bad. She came up with that psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before. Kuno just wanted to talk to you about his name. Kuno S was the one who wound him up and directed him. Also, Kuno hasn't stopped talking to you, even enjoys it from time to time. When you talk to the other one, it's like talking to a cornered animal. She only hisses and says murder was the case that they gave her. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. Fuck you whispering about. Oh, look at this. I like the, the video here. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Fuck you, he's whispering about. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. <laughs> this is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. What's up with her? She's terrifying. Crazy? You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pigs. Stop talking to him! Kuno, I'm fucking warning you! You're gonna get us into shit! She understands what you're trying to do. Yo, see! Did Kuno not tell you? Kuno told you. Kuno talks to whoever he wants. 
Talk big. Kuno's got it under control. You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her, so she can't read his lips. Kuno means she killed someone. That's right. She's a killer. Like, actually a killer. That's spooky. He's meant everything he said before. But right now, he not only means it, he is sincere. Isn't she too small? Are you getting this? You think I'm fucking telling you a joke here? How hard do you think it is to kill a fat ass? Sweet talk him, then knife him. She's probably killed a pig too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Come on, she hasn't killed police officers. I knew you pigs were too naive for this shit. Good thing Kuno's got her under control. Kuno keeps her calm. The creature peers at you both from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. Do you think she has anything to do with the dead guy? Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up, but she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Where were you? Look, Kuno's gonna put you at ease. We didn't do it. He speaks the truth, my liege. Said she's crazy? Yeah. She's psycho. None of that kiddie psycho. Cap and shit. She does the real deal. Yeah. Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig. You don't want to know. Fuck knows. She says it's the song of her people or some shit. Crazy people. The fucking knackies. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds boreal. Like something from the tundra and tiger covered cutler, Isola. Far, far away from here. As far as possible, really. You mean evil little red haired people <laughs> like her? Yes, they do. The Suruese have that ginger gene. Could she be Suruese? But Kuno has red hair too, doesn't he? Suruese? Like that man from Hjelmdal shit? She could be. She could be that Hjelmdal shit. Revelshot does have a small Suruese community. Or she climbed into a yakberry crate and was shipped over accidentally. Yeah, the voiceover turned out really good. Um, although I've heard people, or I've seen people saying here uh, that they miss the original Kuno voice. Uh, this one feels kind of like the original, but it's been years since I played the game for the first time. Fuck no, she's not my sister. She's just a stray who got in like a mad dog or some shit. Yeah, she was just there. What was that, Kuno? She was in the hallway, dripping wet, by the fucking shoe rack, in the dark. The hallway there with the janitor's closet? Yeah, that's the place. She was just balled up near the closet, psycho style. Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days, in the corner, every time Kuna went out. I don't know, someone left the door open. Kuna comes home and she's sleeping under the desk, under a pile of clothes, like a dog. What about your parents? Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit. Doesn't even see her there, or thinks it's fucking Kuno. Shit's all on Kuno. Kuno, Kuno S, two of a kind. 
Why is she called Kuno S then? Because she fucking looks like Kuno. You don't know her name? No one knows her name. Kuno told you this shit was psycho killer. How are you dealing with this, Kuno? Your life seems really hard. How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. He doesn't need you fucking with any of it. C doesn't either. You don't... You don't think you met them when you tried this game on release? How could you miss Kuno, the kid throwing rocks at the corpse who shouts at you as you're investigating the murder scene? Kuno's got this shit under control. <laughs> okay, this seems nice here. You need backup. I'm here for you. Listen, listen. C is Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting her. You fuck with C. You fuck with Kuno. You threaten her. You threaten to take her away. This is what it all comes down to. He needs you to take him seriously now. I am going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her, sneak up on you later, and fuck you up. You understand? Uh... Alright, now we can do business. Yeah, what do you want? Kuno can hook you up with... I don't hook him up with shit, Kuno! <laughs> See, relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno, you get all kinds of shit. Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics <laughs> if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno gonna get you hooking for more. Cash in big style. Pig <laughs> cooker. See, it's tension and release with Kuno. Now we releasing. The pan buying shit, that's on now too. 90% discount for Kuno's pig. Kuno can flex. <laughs> 90 percent just he's gonna offer me the pants for like 500 dollars before kuno flexes for hobos kuno sees you're in need oh no those pants are actually really great they give me two pluses there's nothing in the game that's given me two pluses so far i actually want those pants kuno gets it from his dad Kuno and his dad are major suppliers. That's where Kuno gets his lightning on. Problem is, Kuno and his dad had a little falling out. Now junkies clawing at Kuno's door. Streets going mad. Kuno's got to throw his dirty popo man at it. <laughs> oh my god. This is perfect because Kim is asleep right now. Dirty popo man is you. In there is Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can take him, you can have half of the speed. Who's your dad, Kuno? Kuno's dad is a fucking monster. He's the most violent man in Revishol. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing. He drinks, too. Are you sure you can take on the most violent man in Revishol? In your condition? Oh my god, with no... I've got one point of health and one point of morale. I'm a wreck. Like half? Half of what? A baggy, but like in this vial. That's not very much. Fuck you talking about half a G? This shit is giant grade A shit. So clean you can barely see it. You can barely see it because there's barely any. Made up my mind, Kuno. Okay. Kuno's listening. I'm going in there guns blazing to get speed because I want to do drugs. I'm going for the big man. I'm going in there for justice. I'm a narc. <laughs> I can say the same thing, but it's a lie.
okay, here we go. I'm just going to talk a big game to Kuno. I like to think that he's been so intimidated by Kuno, he feels the need to impress this child now. Sure, whatever. If you survive, make sure to bring that ship back to Kuno. Kuno's almost out. You wouldn't like the Kuno when he's out. Just get in the apartment building. Kuno knows you already fucked your way in. Kuno knows everything. Go to room 12, first floor, and kick down the door. Police violence style. Kuno style. And then it's action time. You're locked in the room with violent fuckheads. That's it. Next time Kuno sees you, you better have his shit. Man, I can actually almost buy those pants. Kuno doesn't fucking care. <laughs> oh, Kuno. So now I have new quests, which is like split, split these drugs and buy some pants. Uh, oh boy. You know, I would like ruin myself talking to this kid and doing all these drugs, <laughs> these utterly it was such... Okay, hold on. Here's what I need to do. I do... I need to... I need to spend a point in endurance so I don't just die. There. Like, I, now I can take a point of damage and not keel over stinks. That's not what I wanted to spend my experience on. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. A shabby door hangs oddly on its hinges, secured to the doorframe with a safety chain. An unpaid energy bill is attached, threatening to cut off the electricity. It's addressed to Mr. Uno Doroita. Okay. I like how it says you actually have to hold the tool if you want to use it, otherwise you suck at it. A shabby door hangs oddly on its hinges, secured to the doorframe with a safety chain. An unpaid energy bill is attached, threatening to come. Put on my working gloves.
A shabby door hangs oddly on its there hinges, secured to the doorframe with a safe snip. The cutter goes through them like dead leaves. The links fall to the ground on the other side of the door. You can just go in now. phone book lies open on the table, covering a stack of utility bills. Right next to it, in plain sight, sits a small bottle of amphetamine, conveniently equipped with a straw. You pocket the bottle as if it were the most natural thing in the world. This gives you a bonus to Motorix. Well, now I have like the full range of drugs. I've got booze, cigarettes, psychedelics, and speed. Some towels and a duvet. Some socks even. Something underneath there is breathing. It's not too late. No one's going to blame you for backing out. You don't have to do this. Just get out. Your hand touches a greasy duvet covered in cigarette burns and ketchup stains. You hear a growl. There is something alive underneath it. You see a 60-year-old, fat, red-headed man passed out from large amounts of alcohol and God knows what else. The smell of shit rises from his mouth. You don't have to take him down. He's already down. Wow, okay. A lump of flesh is sticking out from under the blanket. It seems to be twitching from time to time, like the paw of an animal who's having a bad dream. A groan rises from the man's throat, dry like a death rattle. He's trying to say something in his sleep. The man groans once again, but his tongue keeps failing him it's impossible to make out the syllables. A hand emerges from the blankets, trying to gesticulate something, and then falls back again, limp and defeated by sleep. A loud snore escapes his mouth. The pile of blankets grunts. It's hard to say if there's anything left you could do. The light from the window is weak, but it seems like he is. His wild, unwashed mane bears a familiar ginger tone. Even the hair on his chest is coppery. No response. A pair of half-open bug eyes is staring back at you from the dark, empty and frozen. It's clear that the person behind them is not awake. 
vorige... Oh, Jesus. Wow, the, the, of the three words he manages to speak, it's a racial slur. It's just two slurs. Oh, boy. isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope disappointment and fear in equal measure. To symbolize the toppling of the old order. Yeah, Kuno's deal is rough. Also, some social democrats were already using it. The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society that could exist in accord with the natural world and at the same time above it. Because white is the color of peace. Whoa. Gone, gone is the glory of hope. Only the scribblings of impoverished students remain in dirty hallways. God, I'm so hurt. I'm so hurt. I'm in such bad shape. I never should have. <laughs> Left the house without Kim. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Yes, get those cutters in there and snip away. This weak chain is no match for your might. I'm a little worried that if I fail a check, then it'll hurt me and I'll die because I'm so weak. No! <laughs> You're trying to cut the body of the lock with the chain cutters. And it's really not working. Oh, God. Ah, I've been getting some... I've been getting some really good rolls and some really bad rolls. No reply. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension on the other side. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Do I have to open the door? Do you have a warrant? I'm not obliged to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Uh, that's fair. shift in temperature 
The air chills around you. Dust settles on the stony floor. A former architect stands before a slice of window, a room plan in her hand. A cold wave has made the air in the building stand still and frozen, with temperatures falling down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Is red from the cold. She's breathing on her fingers, clasping the plan. Traces of sadness are visible in her expression. Faint pencil lines on paper depict the same place, but a missing eastern wall connects the room with the neighboring apartment. Ideas for arranging the furniture have been jotted down. It's clean and empty, with new tapestry embellishing the walls. A standard HB graphite pencil has fallen off a three-legged stool in the middle of the room. Wow. Yeah, I love playing with shivers. Although it, it's not really that high yet for me, but it's one of my higher stats. I need another 15 cents so that I can buy pants from Kuno. Hey there, talk to me. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? It's just me, Kim. Kim. Uh, Kim's asleep. Ooh. Not only have you found my address, you've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. Really? Yes. I keep hoping a shaft will collapse on me. But somehow, it never happens. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Like me. Right now, I'm doing nothing at all. Does anyone in a city like this? If there's pain about any particular home she's lost, she's buried it deep, fortified herself against it. Shoot, piggy. It's what you do, isn't it? Can't you tell? I'm paid. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. Yeah? I don't have an opinion. I lie. Lying is cool, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. Uh, there's no hospital. You're thinking of an entirely different sort of game. I mean, if I go home and sleep, it'll re it'll restart things, and I'll be able to. Uh. I'm assuming I'll restart. Suddenly you feel the box is on fire. Why do you feel that way? <gasps> More drugs! Everybody, I have so many drugs. I never saw those hallucinogens when I did my previous playthrough. Makes me feel a little better about kind of doing this obsessive... 
This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number. It's a solid lump of metal, but yes. Get those cutters in there and snip away. This weak chain is no match for your might. Been in there. Maybe the balcony. This is the guy I had talked to before. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Hmm. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. You know, I worry if I go in there, I won't be able to finish up with Kuno tonight because it's almost 2 o'clock. And that means tomorrow I'm going to have to talk to him in front of Kim and, like, give him his half of the drugs that I just stole from his dad. So I think I'm, I'll go up and I'll talk to him later. There's also that door. There's those two doors that I couldn't get into. If I hadn't botched that roll uh, to get into that door, I, I probably would have found like at least enough money to give me like the 15 bucks I need to buy those super pants. Maybe if I split these drugs with Kuno. Maybe I should try wearing these pants. Is there anything in them? I do have a skill point I could use, but I don't want to waste it just to get a reroll on interfacing. I didn't mind spending a point on like my physical stat because I really needed something. I really needed more than two hit points to play this game. Um. Uh, Is the what is composure though? Fuck does Kuno. 
doing okay? I took care of the drugs. All right. So you got Kuno's kilo. Here is how we do it. First, you give Kuno Kuno's kilo. Then Kuno gives you half back. That's how we split it. It's the best way. Street way. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm keeping it and I'm doing it all myself. Aren't you going to ask how I got past your dad? Where down the street is? You send your little friend in dressed as a hooker? Distracted him? That's some sick shit. Tell your little slanty-eyed friend. Respect from the Kuno. Kuno wants to hear all about it. But first we split the kilo. Then we shoot the shit. By kilo, you mean gram, right? Kuno knows what Kuno means. <sighs> now, this is actually, like, I am playing a train wreck of a human being here, right? I can keep my word to this child and split the drugs that we just stole from his dad. I can keep I can keep the drugs and say I'm going to do them all myself or I can keep them and say hey you're 12. You know what? I'm going to split these drugs You know, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to be straight up with Kuno. Kuno's life is so shitty that it's like he does not need one more person lying to him. That's my take. Wow. That's heavy. There you go. More than half in there. Kuno's fucking honorable like that. Now tell me, how the fuck are you still alive, pig? <laughs> uh, it's not the easy life you got going on. Uh, oh boy, how about we start with I met your dad? Yeah, you do some sambo shit, sneak in. Was the Beano Cloud hooker thing real? Uh, I killed your dad. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, boy. You know, Kuno, I'm going to tell you a story because it is a funny story and you're the best entertainment you have is throwing stones at a corpse and doing meth. So I'm going to tell you a funny story about my partner. Now arrest him. Now arrest him for possession. Fuck out of here. Who not made that shit up to demean you pigs? But is that why your hooker friend isn't here? Too ashamed to face the cunt. Look, Kuno's not judging. Kuno gets it. Tactical approach and shit. Hooker style. Covert ops. Combat trauma shit. Whatever it takes, right? <laughs> oh, it won't let me out of the conversation, though. It was dark. I snuck in and got out. Or... Or three? Both of these are honest. I mean, to a kid, your dad is the biggest person in the world. And I don't doubt that when he's up and moving around, he's a fucking terror to this poor kid.
like what do what do you do it was dark we sneaked in and got out or just telling him the truth Yeah, there's no more, you know, food there. You know, it's it's straight up saying like, hey, your dad is a mess. At least some adult will maybe say that to this kid. It's not kind, but it's true. And maybe he needs to hear somebody say it. What? Fuck right. Kuno's dad was sleeping like a bum. Kuno told you. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about anything. Fucking breaking and entering shit. That's nothing to Kuno's dad. You got lucky, pig. Kuno knew this. Kuno's fucking violent fiend dad's been drinking hard lately. Kuno knew you have a way in. Narrow window. Kuno window. Oh, boy. in here come on just stop or stop acting tough the thing is like when that guy wakes up he's I mean he's still a grown ass man and this is a skinny fucked up kid um what are you trying to do get the Kuno to stop Kuno's just getting it on oh Kuno Keep your ass together, Kuno. Maybe this. Whatever scary thing he might have been, now he isn't anything. How about that? Like, man, you were right to be afraid of him, but you can get over that now. Yeah, Kuno's dad is fucking nothing. Fucking coma shit, stroke shit. Kuno's dad is so fucking violent. He's had a stroke many times. Shit. Kuno's gonna have one too. Gonna be just like Kuno's dad. Speed shit, crime shit, fucking on the bed. Kuno's gonna go out like Kuno's dad. Revishol West style. Oh, Kuno. Stop saying all this sad shit, Kuno. There's a touch of grief in there. Fuck are you talking, sad? <laughs> Kuno's got hard shit, death shit, nothing shit. You don't have to. Get your fucking nun ass out of here before Kuno fucks it dead. You think because you brought Kuno one gram of speed, you're friends now? Turn into. Kuno ain't turning into shit. Kuno is. Kuno is that shit? Kuno won! Oh, you won, Kuno! Like, this he knows. He knows number one. But I could just bring up the utility bills. Fuck right there, where? Fucking three years or some shit? Let me guess, Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about them. Yeah, that's right. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about that electricity and light shit. Just wants to pound on people and drink. Oof. That's no place to live. Find somewhere else? That's a ridiculous thing to say to a 12-year-old. Find a job, pay them yourself? That's ridiculous, too. That's right, it's a shithole. Kuno's gonna move underground, Leroyme shit, ancient shit. Kuno's gonna live in a fucking catacomb. At least you got a plan. Yeah, in a tomb, Kuno. Man, I gotta at least try this. The fuck do you know about Kuno's life? Kuno's got plans. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, we got plans. 
Six meters underground, below piping from before the war, the collapsed remains of the Martinez storm drain system. There are two stolen flashlights with piles of batteries next to them, beside two bedrolls, in the dark and opening into the lower tunnels. Oh, this is neat. I get a sense for what these kids are planning to get away to because of shivers. Yeah, pig, this shit is done. Now get the fuck out of Kuno's face. Kuno needs to drop the bomb. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll I'll talk to you later, Kuno. Kuno doesn't fucking care. That's a unfortunate glitch that that's not showing up right. And looks like I have like one minute, one minute to go to bed. Which is probably a good thing before I just straight up die from lack of pants and health. And the only thing left to do is quit, get inside. This guy, this asleep guy, he finally woke up and went somewhere else. Hold on, wait, before I talk to him, I gotta make sure I'm dressed right. Uh, should I wear, I'm gonna surprise him, gotta change it up and put on pants. Um, put on glasses. Maybe he won't even know who I am. Um, Whoa, hold on. There's something new in the kitchen? Oh, I can't get there. That sucks. Can I help you? Can I get a drink? Do I have a shaker in my hand? He sounds irritated. Am I wearing a little bow tie? Am I wear am I smiling? Do you see me smiling and shaking my little shaker? No. Do you know? Because I'm not a bartender. I'm a cafeteria manager. Is there anything else you wanted? Play it calm. This man needs to understand you need a drink to help the community deal with police stuff. I need a drink. It's almost two in the morning. I technically got here before closing time. Well, you're not getting it, asshole. <laughs> now, was there anything else you needed? Another thing. Great. I love those. Yes. Okay. Goodbye, Gart. It's it's been fun knowing you for an entire day. I feel like we've really grown together in our relationship. I'm gonna try to... Cam! Cam!
camp. There's a kid who was mean to me. Fine. The fan stands still. The switch must be broken because nothing happened. The lights are on. Oh no, I don't like that. The lights are off again. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. It's your face in the mirror, adorned with the expression. <laughs> Trying to, oh boy. Trying to get your face from making that horrible expression is one of the first attempts you make. Can I close the door? Okay. That was a weird autosave. The window stands broken and it's you see some lights shimmering. Okay, so I think that is straight up. That's the end of the day. <laughs> it would be incredibly out of character, but hilarious if Kim just ran up and punched Kuno. Um Um So Uh yeah, I think Yeah. I think, I think this is going to have to be it for a day because I think if I go to sleep, um, yeah, I think if I go to sleep, um, I'll probably have to talk with my subconscious, my volition. Oh, it's all damage. Um, oh, it's interesting, though, that it's not just that, like, my volition is low, like, as a, like, you know, sanity points or whatever. It's that I bet I can't make my passive checks when my volition is that low. That sucks. Um... I want to buy up next. I do like I think I want like I really I wouldn't mind getting like a little more half-life um more conceptualization um really shivers. I'm going to get at least one more point of shivers, I think. I want to. I want to be. I want to really lean into Ghost Cop. Um, but the other, you know, I could also buy these pants. Talking to the gardener will be easy. Um, can talk to the smoker. Track down my gun and badge. I suspect I might need to do this with Kim to actually finish inspecting the victim's body. Like, officially as a quest. Yeah. Um, anyway, 
yeah, I feel like this was a good playthrough. I got through most of Kuno's stuff, uh, which was kind of important because I did want to do that as an uh, uh, sort of an after hours stream. Save it one more time here. Two in the morning. And I think this is where we will uh, we'll call it a day. Thanks for joining me here uh, tonight, playing a weird part of this weird game that I love. Uh, let me take a brief peek, though. Uh, well, there's over 300 of you sticking around. It's been a long time since I've done a late night stream. Um, let me see who's on here that I know. Um, there's nobody that I know. Oh, there's Scara. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll throw, um, Um, yeah, uh, if you've ever seen Team Fight Tactics, um, you can go say howdy there. Um, you know, or should I, I think I've, I've raided Scara before. Um, what do we want? Team Fight Tactics with Scara. Or there's somebody here that apparently I watched, I used to watch play Minecraft, although I don't remember. I followed a bunch of people a couple of years ago and then like never really followed through with very much of it. So what sounds better? Oh, Pudge, uh, welcome. Hope you had, this is kind of a weird stream. Normally it's like, normally at least I have the lights on. Um, but normally it's a little more energetic. This was sort of late on the weekend. Um, but I, I hope you enjoyed it reasonably well. Um, um, I will be uh, gaming on... Uh, I will be gaming on... Fridays for the foreseeable future. And uh, I think I'll I'll send you towards Skara, who's a fun guy, uh, does an entertaining stream, Team Fight Tactics. I played it for a little while when it first came out, then I got real angry at the game, and now it's all different. So whatever moderate skill I used to have is uh, uh, just not appropriate anymore. But uh, go say howdy to him and his people um, and give him my best. And uh, I hope you all have a, a good start to your upcoming week. And I hope you manage to stay safe and healthy. Healthy. You know what? That's, that'll be our week. We will try to stay safe and try to be healthy. I'll talk to you all later.